Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Acute leukemias are characterized by mass clonal proliferation of hematopoietic progenitor cells that fail to differentiate into mature forms. These immature cells, or blasts, accumulate in the bone marrow and peripheral blood, resulting in all kinds of cytopenias. Not only that, leukemic cells can accumulate in just about any site of the body, including the liver and spleen, lymphatics, bones, CNS, and testicles. That's right! Here at Cute Luke Ceramics, you're going to get glaze in all the nooks and crannies. And that's okay. That's what art is all about, you know? Getting in there and getting your hands dirty and, on occasion, your testicles. We're getting to that part. First, a little background. There are generally two different types of acute leukemias based on which bone marrow precursor cell becomes malignant. Myeloid precursors or lymphocytic precursors. There's also a special type of leukemia called acute promyelocytic leukemia, which is a biologically and clinically distinct subtype of acute myeloid leukemia. Let's go through each one, shall we? Starting with those myeloid ones. Acute myeloid leukemia, or AML, is caused by a somatic mutation in a bone marrow stem cell, specifically a myeloid stem cell. Remember, myeloid progenitor cells are the ones giving rise to red blood cells, white blood cells, including neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils, mast cells, monocytes, megakarocytes, pretty much everything but B cells, T cells, and natural killer cells. In acute myeloid leukemia, myeloid progenitor cells get stuck in the immature myeloblast stage and start to proliferate like crazy, filling the marrow and blood with millions of immature dysfunctional blast cells. And when these blasts start to blow up at this immature stage, you actually lose all the mature, functional forms downstream. But more on that later. To remember myeloblasts specifically, think of these irregular blasts and blotches of paint made by a likely legally blind patron over here. Those immature, irregularly shaped splotches of paint are going to be a recurring symbol for immature cells getting pumped out into the circulation before they're fully formed. And because AML specifically involves myeloblasts, which are precursors to granulocytes, we've made the splotches blue, white, and pink to remind you that we're dealing with basophil, neutrophil, and eosinophil progenitor cells. There are a number of AML subtypes. However, since most of them present similarly, we won't get into the details. However, again, there is one subtype that I do want to introduce you to, and that's acute promyelocytic leukemia, which we'll refer to as APL. APL is a biologically and clinically distinct variant of AML where neoplastic promyelocytes accumulate in the bone marrow. It's the next stage after myeloblast, represented in this scene by the sporty guy with the GoPro shirt. As we'll see, APL is special because it has some unique features and a specialized treatment. AML is the most common acute leukemia in adults, with the median age at time of diagnosis around 65. APL accounts for 5 to 20% of AML cases and is rare in the first decade of life, mostly affecting middle-aged adults. In the setting of leukemia, leukemic blast cells infiltrate the bone marrow, leading to a reduction of normal red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So, patients generally present with symptoms related to one or more cytopenias. We're talking aplastic anemia, granulocytopenia, which you'll often hear referred to as neutropenia, since neutrophils dominate the granulocytes, and thrombocytopenia. One of the most common presenting symptoms is general fatigue, which is due to a reduction in normal red blood cells as erythroid precursors are replaced with blasts in the bone marrow. Just look at this fatigued, anemic gentleman here, working the overnight shift at Cute Luke's. He's seen some things. Other symptoms of anemia include weakness, shortness of breath, feeling cold, lightheadedness, and headache. Patients with thrombocytopenia may present with bleeding manifestations such as epistaxis, gingival bleeding, heavy or prolonged menstrual bleeding, or easy bruising. Depicted by the ceramics glaze on this employee here. That's just glaze, right? As a consequence of a reduction in mature functioning leukocytes, particularly neutrophils, patients are likely to present with infections of variable severity. Patients may describe fevers or infections that have increased frequency or duration. 
Leukemic cells can infiltrate the gums and cause gingival hyperplasia with enlarged, sore, bleeding gums, represented here by this expanding bubble gum. This is more common in AML, particularly the monocytic subtype.